So take a look at this. Well, actually, first of all, hey, how's it going? It's been a while. Uh, I got something. I got something for you. You may or may not be interested. What's this? It's Steam. You probably know it, right? Steam is a nice little desktop application that you can have. And uh, I think it has a pretty slick UI. I like, I like the, what they've been doing. You can tell they probably put a lot of money into this, a lot of effort into the design. Because uh, a good interface is probably going to give them more money. So it's worth putting money in if you get more money out. And some of you may have wondered, you know, for an app like Steam or some other similar application, like, oh, that looks nice. I wonder how they made that. What did they do it in? Did they make it in C Sharp? Did they make it in Java? Did they make it in Python? Let's take a look. Well, this looks like uh, what Steam is doing here. It's got like a bunch of uh, applications in here. Let's look at this. They get, we can see the command line that was used to run them. This is an option you can enable in the task manager. And uh, we can see something in here. Something program Steam bin Ceph. Ceph win. Interesting. Ceph. What is Ceph? Oh, here it is again. Ceph log. Oh, nice. Ceph, I wonder what that is. Let's take a look at this. Uh, you might be familiar with this one. This is the software that most people, most streamers and a lot of people who record videos do. They used to record their screen when they're doing stuff like gameplay or tutorials. And it's called OBS. And that's a nice open source piece of software. We could take a look at uh, what OBS is doing here. What's the, what the dog doing? Type utility. Where have we seen that before? Type utility. Mmm, that looks familiar. What else we got in here? User data dir equals user chili app data local Ceph. Ceph again. You see? It's all connected. So what is Ceph? Well, Child Evangelism Fellowship, whose purpose is to evangelize boys and girls. Mmm. Or Chromium Embedded Framework. Ah, ah, yes. So this is a thing, and uh, a lot of apps are using it. A lot of big, prominent apps who want their they want their user interface to not be complete shit, and they also want to write the main part of their app in C plus plus. That's the other part of it. And if you want C plus plus and you want a user interface that's not shit, well, that's hard. But this can make it easy. Easy being a relative term because it's not easy, but it's easier than many of the alternatives. Now, you might be asking two questions. First one, is it possible to learn this power? And I think it is. I, I want to teach you because, you know, looking on YouTube, there's not, a lot of, there's not a lot of material. A lot of big apps are using this. No one's really talking about how to do it. So in this video, what I want to do is I just want to take a look at uh, what are the options? What are some of the options that we have in C++ for making like a UI-driven application? How do they stack up, and uh, why do I think that uh, Ceph is uh, a really good, maybe maybe in, in many cases, the best option? So what are our options in C++? So one you might be quite familiar with, is often recommended, is the Qt framework. It's a little ass to work with, like the Qt make system and all the tooling around it. It's, it's, it's not my cup of tea, I'm going to be honest with you. It's also important to understand that there's like two kinds of Qt, in, in, as far as I understand. So there's like a widgets-based... And that's basically just like native Win32 UI components, controls. Now this is like a simpler option, but the, the problem with it is it's going to give you a UI that looks like ass for the most part, and you're kind of limited as to, you know, what kind of controls you can get. You don't have like a huge selection of specialized controls. You're limited to the basics, and they look like ass. But it's simple, and the app you ship will probably won't be that huge either. Now, the other thing they have is they have QML. And QML can look very sexy, depending on how much work you want to put into it. But here's the thing about QML. It's basically just, you know, HTML, CSS, but like a shittier HTML, CSS that's more niche and going to be harder to work with because there's not as much, you know, documentation and support, and it's, it's, not a, it's not a huge thing like HTML, CSS is, and it's going to be harder to figure out how to use, to get help with, basically. So now Windows, Microsoft has their own idea about how you can make a nice UI on Windows, right? They got lots of ideas. They keep coming up with a new one every year. They got, like, WinUI, all these versions of WinUI, and there's, like, there's, like, Maui, which I think is a browser, and then they got, well, they, they've had WPF for a while, 
And I mean, you know, they, they keep saying, you know, WPF is the old stuff. Use our new thing. But the new thing keeps changing. WPF keeps sticking around. So, I mean, if you're going to pick something, probably pick safer bet is to do WPF. But I don't know, man. Guess what? It's all just shittier HTML too. So, there you go. We're finding a little theme here, which is like, if you want a UI that doesn't look like ass, you're going to have to do some markup and styling. And if you're going to do that, like, you might as well, like, do the big boy and not play around with these rinky-dink mofos. There's wind forms. Again, that's like a .NET thing. It also looks ugly. But the, the app you ship will be smaller. This is, a, this is a contender, in my opinion. That's same GUI, right? Because if you're, you know, long-time member of my channel, you probably can figure out how to, like, rig up a render loop in, like, DirectX or OpenGL or something. And then you can just kind of plug ImGUI in there. And ImGUI, I mean, you know, like if you make an app with ImGUI, it's going to look like an app with ImGUI. It's going to look like most of the other apps that use ImGUI. You can do some things. You can you can play tricks with the styling and kind of make it a little customized. But it's always going to look like an ImGUI app. And you're going to be limited in how you can lay things out. It's very rigid. But it does have quite a few controls. And I mean, if you don't really care about looking like super good it looks okay it's definitely better than like fucking wind forms and it's simple it's a lot simpler than uh, some of the other options so i think imgui is like the most container like if you aren't going like full-blown like i want like a professional grade app like no one's you know discord steam they aren't you're gonna use imgui but you're not discord you're not steam maybe you use imgui and i think that's fine I think ImGUI is good. Like, I mean, look at this. Look at this screenshot. Like, you can do you can do some shit with ImGUI. No lie. Uh, but if you're if it's not good enough for you, if you want the real shit, I recommend Chromium. There's a lot. There's a lot of benefits here, and the hugest benefit here, because obviously you're giving some stuff up. Like, I'm I don't like JavaScript, and CSS always ruins my day. This isn't a choice I make on personal preference. This is a choice very pragmatic. There is an enormous ecosystem of like component toolkits and utilities that you can pull in because people make a lot of web pages. There's a huge pool of resources you can pull from to make a UI very easy with minimal work on your end to make it look good. And that vastly outweighs you know, the downside of, okay, I guess, I guess I got to do some JavaScript. Well, I can make it a little better. I can use TypeScript, but in the end, it still kind of sucks. But the upside is that I don't have to, you know, spend my whole life just fucking around making UI shit. I can make the thing that the UI is actually supposed to hook up to. And that is very important. Now for Chromium, I think you got like two main options here. You got two main containers. One is Ceph. If you want to do or you need to do a lot of C++ stuff. If a lot of your code paste doesn't have to be C++, then you can probably go with Electron. And Electron is basically, oh, you just write your, your whole app in JavaScript and that that's it. That's You're done. And that's nice because you only have one language to work with. You can share, you know, a lot of source files between your front end and your back end, which makes marshalling the data between there a lot easier. But, I mean, if you are doing stuff that requires, you know, the, the access that is granted by a native C++ application, then you're probably better off doing Ceph. Now, I like C++. And I do a lot of stuff that requires that kind of access. So that's why I learned Ceph. But Electron is out there if, you know, it's an option. I'm just saying, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about Ceph. There's probably a lot more information about how to make an Electron app already out there. Ceph is kind of, you know, it's a little bit of the dark magic. And so that's why I want to make a video on that. And that's it. So that's the that's the whole comparison. I'm going to make a few videos on this. How to get a Ceph project up and running. How to get the, the front end of it. I can get that built and loading and everything. And I'll show you a very nice UI framework that I use. You can make a, like a really good UI with minimal effort. Anyways, that's it for this video. It's good to be back uh, for a little bit at least. If you like it, click that like button. Helps a lot. And I will see you again with a little bit more NanoCeph.